So for the final WTA 1000 event of the year in Beijing, first time in four years that we're coming back to this tournament, we've got some massive names playing because a lot of players are still trying to get qualified for the WTA finals in a couple weeks time, but let's go see who's not playing in this event. So some big names not playing, Bagu, she's not playing, Benchich also not playing, Collins, Keys, Mukova's not playing, and she's currently in the top eight for the race of the finals, so that's really tough to see that she's not there because her spot is up for grabs now. Pliskova, Stevens, and Svetolina all not playing in Beijing this week. Let's go to the top of the draw with the number one seed, Sabalenka, for the first time in a tournament as the world number one, but she doesn't get a buy in the first round because, of course, performance buys are included in this Beijing tournament. So she has to play Kennan in the first round. That is an absolute nightmare. She lost to Kennan earlier in the season, so that's going to be really tough. Winner of that match will take a qualifier on in the second round. Then you've got Yuan taking on Mertens. Winner of that will take on either Paulini or the number 15 seed to Daj Maya in the second round. Then you've got Krajikova, number 10 seed, taking on a qualifier. Fire. Winner of that will take on Pavlyuchenkova, who gets a performance by after making the semifinals in Tokyo. So she won't have to play that first round. Then you got Trevison taking on Maria. Winner of that will take on either Zhang or the number five seed Rabakina in the second round. That is a blockbuster first round match. But what a start to this section of the draw. Rabakina, Sabalenka, Krajikova all in the same section. Not to mention both Sabalenka, Rabakina playing against Zhang and Kennan. Nightmare first rounds, and then the performance buy comes back, and Pavlyuchenkova gets the benefit. So it's a really weird section of the draw, and a really tough section. Going to the next section of the draw, you got Pagula, the number four seed, gets a buy in the first round after making the semifinals last week in Tokyo. She'll take on the winner of Vekic or Blinkova, who are going at it in the first round. Then you got Tian taking on Nuskova. Winner of that will take on either a qualifier or the 13th seed, Ostapenko. Then you got the 12th seed, Kvitova, taking on Wong. Winner of that will take on either Parks or Samson over in the second round. Then you got Kostruk versus Chokiaretto. Winner of that will take on either a qualifier or the number seven seed, Jabur, in the second round. Of course, Ons Jabur trying to qualify for the WTA finals. But an interesting section here. Pagula's been playing really well. She's been playing really well this week in Tokyo, especially making the semi finals. Possibly could make the final, even win the title by the time this comes out. Jabur looking for a spot there, but that top half of the draw is really tough. Of course, this section of the draw will take on the Sabalenka Rabakina section in the semi finals. So we could be getting Sabalenka. Pagula in the semis. We could be getting Sabalenka Jabur in the semifinals. We could be getting Rabakina Pagula, Rabakina Jabur in that semifinal lineup. Or if you want to go a little bit different, you could get Krajikova taking on Kvitova, for example, if you want to go really wild. But that top section of the draw, that top half is really stacked. Bottom half of the draw now, we've got the number six seed, Sakari. She gets a buy in the first round after having a good week in Tokyo. She awaits the winner of Fruvitova and Roos, who are going out in the first round. Then you've got Wong versus Vonareva. Winner of that will take on either Sharif or the number 11 seed, Kazakina, in the second round. Then you've got the number 16 seed, Kudamatova, getting a buy in the first round, a performance buy after making it to the semifinals of Tokyo like the other three ladies already. She awaits the winner of Sharenko or Zhu, who are playing in the first round. Then you've got Kasteya taking on Mardich. Winner of that will take on either Alexandrova or the number three seed, Goff. Very tough round for Goff in that first round. The first match since winning the US Open as well. So really tough start for Goff. But interesting section, you know, Zachary Kudamatova playing well this week. Kudamatova just beat Sviantek and Zachary is on such a great run. Kazakina also isn't someone to overlook either. And playing Alexandrova, Goff in the first round, very tough. But man, it's going to be an interesting section. Zachary's the player in form. It'd be great to see Zachary Goff potentially in a quarterfinal. Then the bottom section of the draw, you've got the number eight seed, Von Drusova taking on Kalanina. Winner of that will take on either Savile or Siniakova in the second round. Then you've got Buzkova taking on a qualifier. Winner of that will take on either another qualifier or the number nine seed, Garcia in the second round. Then you got the 14th seed, Azarenka, taking on Lynette. Winner of that will take on either Brady or a qualifier in the second round. Then you got Potapova taking on Gracheva. Winner of that will take on either Tormo or the number two seed, Fiontek, who, by losing to Kudamatova in the quarterfinals of Tokyo, gave away her bye in the first round. So now she's got to play first round in a 1,000 event for the first time for the entire season. So it's going to be really tough for Fiontek after some really weird performances lately. But again, interesting section. You know, Azarenka, obviously Fiontek, Garcia, Von Drusova, some really tricky names there. Of course, this section of the draw will take on the Zachary Goff section. So we could be getting a rematch of Fiontek versus Goff in the semis. That'd be great. Or maybe if you want to go with some more Asian swing form, you could be going Fiontek taking on Zachary, which would be really interesting to see that one as well, seeing Zachary's in such good form. Or we could get a rematch between Fiontek and Kudamatova potentially in the semifinals. Or if we don't trust that Fiontek's going to win, maybe Garcia Zachary for the third week in a row. We could be getting that. Or maybe even Garcia versus Goff if you want to go with something a little different. But man, really interesting interesting section, especially now that Sviantec is not playing as well as she did. It's going to be really interesting to see how she can recover after a couple of weird weeks.
weeks and a couple of strange matches in Tokyo. So there it is. That is the China Open, the first time in four years we're going back to Beijing. It's a stacked event, as it should be. It's a final 1,000 event of the year. We've got a couple of spots left up for grabs for the WTA Finals as well, and there's a lot of players there that are trying to get those final four spots. Let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to win this event? I mean, Pagula's look great. Zachary's unstoppable. Sviantec's looking a little shaky. Sabalenka, though, is really good in Asia, or at least she was four years ago. So she might be the favorite to win this whole event. But, man, what a crazy tournament. Beijing, it's going to throw up a lot of upsets, I reckon.